I'm making a trombone of cardboard and tendalabo. This should be fun. about an hour into this thing now and <laughs> all I really have is the bell of the horn and like the base of the bell over here. Looks like I have my work cut out for me. So this is day two of recording this video and uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to finish the whole thing. Uh, on day one, like I had hoped. However, uh, I was able to build a pretty cool telescope looking thing. This is the base of the horn. Uh, so now I just gotta make a slide that goes out like that way. Um, and I have some like bigger cardboard over here for that. Uh, and now I know what I'm doing, it should be a lot more like self-explanatory and straightforward. Maybe I'll even finish this today if if it's easy enough. Uh, so let's get started. So this sheet of cardboard only goes like so far until the ends fold up. So when making the slide, I can't really have these creases on the slide or else it'll make the thing sort of like not work. <laughs> so I need to measure out how, how long this middle piece is um, so I know uh, what I have to work with. Cause this is basically the longest I can make the slide right here. So, like, 62 centimeters. Cool. Nice, right, so now all I gotta do is fold this piece up. Up until now, it's been easier said than done. Okay. Put it stay like that. And hopefully, we should just go right on the end. Uh, Population. Oh, yeah, that's not that's not working too well. These are all like almost there. I just have to cut these. Tabs are hard. This one's like right there. Oh, okay, that was in. Okay, that tab's in. a piece to bridge the gap between these two, the top of these two. Uh, I'm going to make like a 14 centimeter gap uh, and they'll have holes in the bottom and these just go in and with some tabs it will hopefully stay right in place and hold everything together nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and make that. Be right back. Alright, so this piece turned out pretty well. Uh, it's just like a rectangle with two holes in the bottom where the horn's gonna go into and the piece that connects to the slide is gonna go into. Uh, so I'm just gonna connect that right now, see how that goes. Perfect. Then... Alright, cool. Perfect. 
and then we have a little U-shape, sort of. So this is the the horn, the bass horn without the slide. Uh, so now I just need to make a little support beam going about right here to hold this whole structure together. Uh, and then I should be able to move on to the side. All right, so I've made this little support area here that will serve as like a sort of grip when I'm holding it. Uh, I've cut out the hole right here that's gonna go into. So now this should all connect and uh, the first half of the horn should be done. Put everything up, slide that on into there. And this should go right in here. Why is it not going? There we go. Perfect. And then we have half of a trombone. Ooh. Now I just have to cut a hole into here where uh, the right Joy-Con is going to go into. So, onto the slide. So the sun's starting to set, uh, I'm going to call it for today, about here, uh, and I made some pretty good progress. Uh, it's starting to look more like an actual instrument. I made the little holder here, where the joystick goes, this is the right joystick. So all I have left to make is uh, the second inner slide, which goes in here, this is the first inner slide. Um, both outer slides, which will go um, around these, so that will always like slide. That's where I'll leave it for now. Um, tomorrow should be the last day of filming. Hopefully, I should be able to finish it up pretty quick. Uh, it's not, it's not a lot left. Um, and yeah, I'll see you then. All right, so it's day three of recording this. Hopefully, the final day. Uh, I went ahead and started making uh, some more progress on the slides. Uh, I made the first outer slide of, on the bottom and the second inner slide, which was quite the feat to try to get into this, because uh, this is like not the most stable piece. I'm a little worried about the slide action here. It's not like the smoothest thing in the world. Decided to put some tape at the end here uh, to like smoothen it up a little bit. Uh, hopefully that's enough to make it like usable. Um, it all depends on how it performs when both of the outer sides are connected. If it's like really stiff when I'm in the final thing, uh, then I might have to think of something else. Whether it's like sort of collapsing this inner slide and making it a little smaller so that this can glide more easily over it. We're doing something with the tabs because that's another point where uh, the inside sort of tends to get stuck on. <laughs> Let's see if we can finish this today. Let's go. So, um, I managed to finish the slide today. Uh, it's a little janky. Uh, I also cheated a little bit. I wanted to keep this whole thing just cardboard and like connecting everything with folds and tabs and stuff like uh, the original Nintendo Labo kit. But like a lot of these a lot of these pieces were just too far gone to like really recover without using some like hot glue uh, or tape. I wanted to finish the whole thing today but it's getting late. I've been at this for a few days in a row and real burnt out, <laughs> to be honest. So I'm gonna take a break for a few days. Oh, all right. So it's been a little while since I recorded the last part of this video, like a long while, but I really need to finish this. <laughs> While I was not working on this, I sort of thought about like, uh, how to make the slide better. The slide's like the weakest part of this thing right now, as it is. Uh, and that's mostly this top inner slide. Um, because, I'll show you right here. Uh, 
the top, the inner side, doesn't move as smoothly with the outer side uh, as the bottom one does. So I'll show you this bottom one. Um, if I just put the bottom one in, then like it moves like... It's not like the smooth thing in the world, but it's like, a lot better than um, the other one. But with, with both of them in, like this top one, it really just doesn't allow for any sort of like smooth movement. I can just get this in there. there we go. You see, this part, when I try to push it back, it sort of moves this and like it's causing this part down here to rip and like I really don't want this part to pull. So it requires me to like sort of hold it like this just so that there's no pushback on here. So that's an issue. So I'm either going to have to sort of cut down these inner slides, probably both of them, now that I think about it. Really, I don't really need these to be full uh, rectangles. So I can just like sort of cut along the top and allow it to fold in on itself so that this, uh, so that there's less space between the inner side and the outer side. Hopefully I should solve it. Uh, I'm also gonna sort of, I'm not gonna completely restructure this part. I'm just gonna sort of cut glue it because at this point, what else is there to do, really? So that's the main goal right now, just fixing the slide. So I, I should explain this now. Um, let me just really push this, this slide in. Like, you can see that, right? The, the, how it sort of... This is the process of moving the slide in right now. Yeah. These rubber bands are pretty important for making the whole thing actually work. So I gotta basically put this rubber band around this part. I don't want to snap, so I won't show up right now. But it's gonna go around here. Um, and this wheel will be in the center. Uh, so like, while it's suspended by the rubber bands, it'll be in there uh, with only the rubber bands suspending it. Can't really show off without like, actually doing it, and I can't really do it right now. <laughs> um, but it's gonna be suspended by the rubber bands. So that when it turns, it's gonna be attached by a string to the end of the slide. When it's not turning, and when I retract the slide back inwards, uh, the rubber bands will allow it to turn back to its original spot. As long as I make the connections of the rubber bands exactly in the center of this wheel and like exactly in the center of the gravity. Because if it's not, then uh, either the wheel will be skewed to the side and like it won't really work as well at all, uh, or it won't be able to turn back on itself. If you have the whole gear mechanism, it should hopefully not be too much of an issue. Just figure out how many spokes have on each wheel uh, and sort of putting the holes into this to make the spokes come out of here and then connect these spokes to another uh, wheel uh, which will have the Joy-Con in it and which will make the whole thing actually work. So let's just finish this slide. <laughs> Alright, now we're talking. It's way better. So now the slide's done. I need to make a mouthpiece and finish up the whole wheel thing. I've already made this whole thing. You can see it's like a little like tilted. But now when this so like send the slide, it's gonna pull this like this way. And then when I start pulling the slide back to where it was. We'll just spin right back. So now that I got the slide working a lot better, I went ahead and skipped over the wheel a tiny bit. Uh, I went ahead and did the, the mouthpiece here, which allows this thing to detect when I'm actually blowing into it. So if I pull up uh, into the lab here, then you'll be able to see. Uh, if I Shoulders here. There we go. Wait, what? I'm gonna turn this off and put it back on. Yeah, I'm gonna take this out. There we go. So, uh, this Joy Con right here, it's got an infrared camera. Uh, and that this is gonna sit right here, right here, pointing upwards uh, t 
towards like right in front of the mouthpiece, the end of the mouthpiece. So if I just slide this right here. Uh, oh shoot! Okay, I see what happened. So the tin foil got stuck inside the thing. Where are my tweezers? There we go. So now it should be fine. If I just pop this in here, sort of slide it in. And then hopefully this is enough tin foil now. If I just put this right in here. And it just sort of stays in place. Um, we got to add more foil. The switch should be able to tell that there's aluminum foil above the camera. Let's try that. Mm. Hello? Might just have to add a little more foil. There we go. Camera. So, well now it's just sort of, it's sort of finicky. Okay, so it doesn't work all the time, but that's like mostly done. Like the whole structure of the mouthpiece is done. Uh, so now I'm moving on to doing this whole wheel gear thing. Uh, I did a bunch of math and stuff. Now I'm gonna cut off some spokes. And hopefully it's works. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I sort of got the wheel mechanism started. Uh, it works alright, um, but there are some things that I didn't really think of when planning this out. Like I'll, I'll just show you. It sort of gets stuck a little bit when going back out. So you can see it turns when I extend the slide. But when I take it back, um, it doesn't really have the easiest time going back with the slide. May as well explain the whole programming thing with the, in the Lava Garage. So, my whole setup here is that here's the infrared camera right here. That's the input. And here's the, the other Joy-Con that's also going to have an input. Uh, and the, uh, this Joy-Con's input is obviously going to be the infrared camera. Uh, but this one is going to use the gyroscope for its input, uh, which is related to this whole wheel mechanism here. So when I extend the slide, it's going to turn this Joy-Con, which is going to affect the note that is played when this is activated. I also have it set up so that uh, the two buttons on the side of this, uh, when I press them, they go into different uh, shelves of the trombone. So normally, just without touching anything, this will play an F. Uh, if I press this bottom one here, it will go up to a B flat, and this one up here will go to a D. So I have those two settings there. Um, and I had to do a bunch of complicated stuff here to make sure that when one is impressed, then it doesn't play any of the other ones and stuff like that. So in the end, it gets me the F here, the B flat or A sharp, and the D. I made a wheel thing. Now I gotta make the actual part of it that will hold the controller back and the little axle. It's gonna work hopefully. It seems to. I don't. I realize I don't need to put all the spokes on the wheel because it's not really gonna use all of them. Because uh, like, it's gonna probably sort of see here, like one full turn on this wheel. Sure. sure. Yeah. Oh wow. It's cool. one full turn on this wheel doesn't require all the spokes on this wheel. And the axle should be pretty easy to make. It's gonna use the same thing that uh, they use in the fishing rod. Sort of the wheel thing that you turn around. So that should be pretty easy. All right, so after a lot of tweaking and fine tuning, uh, I managed to get the second wheel onto this thing. Uh, with the axle, it's... Yeah. The axle just made a cardboard, uh, and it made like a sort of hexagon shape using like some wedges on a rectangle. Uh, so that allows us to rotate through 
when I extend the slide mount, this wheel turns uh, only a tiny bit, a lot less than this wheel, which is what I want. So let's demonstrate. You can see this the second wheel, when the slide is extended all the way, it only turns like 45 degrees or something like that. Um, the only thing is like it really just doesn't like to turn backwards and that's mainly the result of like the rubber bands uh, that were meant to sort of achieve that but uh, they don't do the best job. Uh, I also added a little hole here on the on the horn for the string to go through so that it, the string lands on these little things uh, along this wheel so that it rolls up nicely. So now with this, I should be able to do uh, a full place on this thing. Alright, so this thing's basically done now. I made a little like cubby sort of thing over here, so I can put the switch right in here. There we go. Perfect. Right now, hurry up. Um, Hold on, do it. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. I should raise the volume actually. I don't want to do that. I don't know if it's at max though. It is. That's great. It's really hard to hear, but like it works. Hmm. I don't even know if it's. So I've decided I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison between uh, the lab bone and my actual trouble that I use. It's, it's a little bit of an unfair comparison <laughs> considering uh, the lack of like volume the lab bone has. But I figured it would be fun, like why not, to do a little bit of a comparison. Um, so let's start off with like a least scale. Um, See, so yeah, I can play a scale on my normal trombone and how that compares on the lab bone. So I'll put that aside and I already have my lab bone all set up over here. Uh, <laughs> I gotta be real careful. Uh, that I don't really hold this at a downward angle or else the whole switch is going to fall out of the horn. It's already happened a couple times and I sort of messed up the right track on the switch that the, that the right Joy-Con um, goes along. Uh, so we got to make sure that nothing happens there. I'm just going to go ahead and play into this. We got to make sure the switch is not on though. That's, that's an important part. Okay, <laughs> it's all good to play now. Since it's all in the gyroscope, like tilting it up and down affects the pitch as well as the slide. But the slide a little less so than I anticipated. Okay. So <laughs> that's an ascending D flat scale on the lab bone. It's obviously pretty uh, inconvenient and not like um, conventional in terms of like an actual trombone, but it's functional, it works. <laughs> like at the very least, you can play notes on it, and they sort of... Alright, so that's it, that's the video. 
Uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Reach out to me on Twitter, Instagram, and all that, which those links will be in the description. Stay tuned.